Welcome everybody, I'm Jimmy, and this is Jimmy Does Knitting. This is my YouTube podcast where I talk about mostly knitting, and we pick a topic for the day that relates to my knitting life, and we go for that. I am Jimmy Does Knitting on what? Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube. So, welcome. Uh, today, we have some admin to talk to, so every episode I have different chapters. If you're interested in different things, please check on the part below and just skip. We are going to cover um, a design call, a pattern release, and intarsia. Like, I am obsessed with intarsia. Intarsia is, like, what I'm here for lately. I have some very exciting stuff that I want to discuss. There's going to be a lot of yarn chat, which is not really typical for me. And we'll go with... I'm just like in-depth stories. This is like the ending of one, starting of another. So there's going to be a lot to talk about. So buckle up, use those uh, chapter markers, and we'll go from there. So the first thing I would like to talk about is my Troy Boy sweater. I talked about this last podcast. I'm wearing it currently. This is the one in uh, Mondim, and this is the fancy version. And what I wanted to do is make a basic sweater uh, for men and there's nothing more basic than a Troy Boy so that's that's what I am calling it. It is a top-down drop shoulder sweater in fingering weight so it's you can try it on it's fairly easy I'd probably say this is like second sweater worthy um, it's really basic I'm going to make a video as I make the second sample the basic version and we'll, we'll go through it. Um, but what you do is you knit the yoke from the back down, pick up on the shoulders, cast on for the neck, knit the yoke to the front, down the body, and then you pick up for the sleeves and knit down. So that is that's the basicness of the sweater. There's not really anything fancy. There is a little bit of a detail, which I'm gonna see if I can show you. Um, where you have, in this version, you have these um, cables, which is just a twisted stitch you don't even need a cable needle for on the sides, and then they also go down the sleeves, I don't know if you can see this, and onto the cuff. And then in the basic version, it's just the, the pearl detail, and it has a little bit longer cuffs than I would say normally. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what we're, we're doing here. There's just, I just was looking for a fingering weight top down sweater for men. There's one that I could find. I didn't want to knit it because it was a raglan. I, for some reason, I'm over raglans. Um, I think drop shoulder gives me a little bit more structure and it's a little bit easier to customize. I don't know if that's true or not, but like in my mind, it has like seams um, without being seamless and or with being seamless, and then, I don't know. I like a drop shoulder better than a raglan on me. I, it's just what's happening. Anyway, so I decided to make one. Um, yeah, so tester call is going to be in the link in the description. You can also see it on my Instagram. Please come and test this. I have um, 10 different sizes, so it's really size inclusive for your small man to your large man or male identifying person if you want a boyfriend sweater whatever um but it is more of a suggested male fit the the shoulders and the the widths and especially like the yoke depth are a little bit more common for a male leaning physique um everything is fingering weight it's 24 stitches um per 10 inches or 10 centimeters four inches on a 3.25 millimeter needle which is a us I don't know I should have looked that up it's in the pattern um, if you would like to test this you're probably going to get on it especially if you are in the Netherlands or if you have a larger size I just never get enough people from the Netherlands to take pictures of or larger size um, yeah so that is the basics of the Troy boy going for testing we're gonna get this out early spring ish um we'll see what the testers are i'm planning on a 10 week test so we'll, we'll figure it out from there now we have some very exciting news in regards to this 
As I said, I'm going to be knitting another sample for the basic pattern. And then I'm also going to be making uh, an accompanying YouTube video where I go through step by step. I'm not going to give you the pattern, but I'm going to give you the techniques you need to execute the pattern. So it will be a really like easy, basic one. And I contacted my local yarn store, which is Stephen and Penelope, and they are the ones that sell Stephen's wool, which is West wool. And I got them to give me some tandem, not tandem, bicycle. This is West wool bicycle. Tandem is their DK weight. Bicycle is their fingering weight. And they generously provided me with eight skeins to make the size that I need. Um, they come in 50 gram skeins. They're 100% wool. It is um, 26 stitches and 32 rows for 10 centimeters. And it is a fingering weight, 50 grams. I don't know if it gives any more. 100% South American Merino wool. So yeah, I've worked with this before. I really like it. As I said, it's really nice for them to support this because I'm really an unknown designer. I think it's because I'm queer and I'm local that they maybe said yes and it was like low bar to entry. Um, but yeah, so I will be making this out of this, which is Dutch Sky. I was I was going to use this yarn anyway, let's say. <laughs> if they wouldn't have gifted it, I would have purchased it to make the second sample. So um, yeah, but it, it was very generous of them to do that for me. I'm very happy to be working with them um, with this, and especially because I'm poor. <laughs> I'm forever on a budget here, and this is really wonderful wool. This is more affordable in the Mondine by Retro Zaria Rosa Pumar in the color black. Um, and this is, I would say, mid range, um, but yeah, so that's what's going to happen with the Troy Boy sweater. Um, this is the yarn for the original one. This is the Mondine by Retro Zaria Rosa Pumar. It's the color black. Um, I forget the exact number, but it's 100% Portuguese wool. It's 24 stitches to 32 rows over 10 inches. Um, yeah. So, Troy Boy sweater, some very exciting yarn, and we're gonna do that. Please sign up for the test. Next, we have one more design thing to talk about, and then we'll get into the entire show fun. So the design I want to talk about is my Dazzle Camo cap. This is ready for release. This is a fingering weight hat. It's great for using up scraps. Um, I'll put it on. I have a little bit of a smaller head, but it's a one size hat. And it's based off of Dazzle camouflage, which is a method of camouflaging where they painted these like ships, these crazy, crazy like ways. And the way, like it made it so you couldn't tell exactly what type of ship. It's like you knew it was there, but like you can't tell the form or anything, so it would confuse people. I don't think it really works with radar these days, but the idea is wonderful and um, it makes really beautiful patterns. So let's go through the, the hat. Um, these are knit on Mondine, and I've talked about this before, so we'll, we'll go through it really quickly. This was my first one. Um, this was Mondine in these two colors which i thought works well i'm not really a speckle person but i saw in the store i went to actually visit the store and i saw this speckle and i thought it would go beautiful with this navy so the navy is color 105 and this blue speckle is 212 and so i made a little bit of a prototype for it i changed the pattern you can see um, the pattern's slightly different, but I, I wanted to put this out there just because of the color combination. This is a more standard color combination, I would say. And it is also in Mondim. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. I mean, look at the top of this. It kind of goes in quite nicely. Um, but it is uh, the Mondim in the... Green is 112, and then the white is their undyed 100. So that's what's happening with the Dazzle camo cap. I think it's a really cool pattern. It's really fun. It's something interesting to do. And as you can tell by this white ball, it barely uses any yarn. So you can use scraps. You can play with what's in your stash. You can do whatever. I would say the contrast color is coming up at about 50 grams, a little less 
when I do things and then this one is coming up a little bit more than that the main color but you can play around with that maybe even do the brim a different color if you want and really just like dive into the stash and do some fun color combinations so if you go to Ravelry this will be up now there will be a little bit of a discount on it and yeah I'd love to see these and see you guys have fun with this now Speaking of having fun and using from the stash, all of this was from the stash that I had. I was going to make mittens out of these, but I decided not to, and I think that this was the perfect project to do the Mondeem. As you can tell, I've been obsessed with Mondeem lately, so that's what's happening. But I also wanted to have some fun and bust my stash, so we'll get into it. I made this version, and this version is obnoxious and I had so much fun making it. I feel like this is what like a Stephen Westshaw is like. Um, it makes no sense. I've had this color combo in my stash and, and I just I just wanted to use it. So the I'll put this on and we'll talk about it. Um, this is not something I would normally wear, but I had a lot of fun knitting it. I just it's so fun. I hope somebody enjoys this one day, but like you see that we used a cone of woolly knit zest which is a neon yellow I think it comes off yellower on screen but it's like highlighter in your face obnoxious 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 yellow I love it I bought a whole cone of it just because I was like maybe I make a sweater out of this one day I'm not really quite sure I just knew that I had to have it in my stash this is their British four ply they had a sale on cones and I was like, I'm grabbing this. I also had to buy a couple of other cones for something. So I did that. So this is stash yarn that I need to put into purpose. And then the other one was this Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the color violet. I held two strands of this together to get the, the purple. Now the purple does dull, I think, the yellow up here a little bit in the crown with the color work, but uh, it's a neon yellow and crazy purple, so um, it, it's it's fine. It's not really going going to change the look in a tremendous amount. So um, I wanted to get rid of the mohair in my stash. I think I did a scarf, and I was I've been wearing the scarf a lot, but I don't particularly like mohair on my neck a whole lot. I've determined I have one sweater that I made last year with a strand of holst and a strand of mohair and that's okay for me to wear but like I I've, I've just decided that I'm not a mohair type of guy and I like the idea when you put it with like a fingering weight yarn or like an unspun how the it gives the unspun structure or you can use it with the fingering weight to change it and make it a little bit of depth which will go in on the intarsia I did something like that um, but I'm not I don't know. I think it's expensive. It's fun to play with, but am I like a mohair person? I just don't think so. So I'm trying to use it. I'm trying to use this from my stash is what I'm trying to say. It was a good palette cleanser. I think I drew it out and did it over like four days, um, but it's really like a two or three day pattern. The brim is a two by two. It starts with a German twisted cast on, um, and then you knit up until the color work and then just follow a chart and it repeats a couple of times. It's really lovely. I enjoyed it and it is out now. So go and buy it. All right. I'm very excited today and I'm talking very fast. So this is going a little faster than I anticipated, but that's all good. We need to talk about the Paragon because it's done and it's beautiful. Let me give you a quick peek at the finished one. This is my finished sweater. Look at this. And then we'll we'll go through it so you can see see what it's all about. So the the color palette, let's start with that. Was based off of the Dutch Delsa Blau. Um it's basically that like porcelain with the blue painting on it and there's a collaboration between KLM and um Bowls, which is Genevere. It's a distillery. It's sort of like the precursor to gin. Gin's like older cousin. And they have these KLM houses. 
right here that uh, <laughs> that they fill up with the bowls. So the chimney is always like a little bit of alcohol in there. This one still has the seal on it. And they have these collectible houses that they make. And if you're in first class in KLM, you can go and get these. So I live in Amsterdam. I've gone to the distillery with my family. And then when my grandparents died, we discovered a little cabinet with these in there. My grandpa used to travel to Amsterdam in for work in like the 90s a lot. And I guess flew first class, which is quite nice. And um, had a bunch of these. So me and my immediate family took these and were like, cool. So that's where the color palette inspiration came from. Um, it's nice, I'm knitting this for my mother. So she is a blue gal and I just thought it would look really nice, especially with the, the patterning and stuff, just like variations of blue, I thought would be really cool. The, the actual like publication has, it's La Bienname and it's like very loud and perhaps unapproachable color ways or something um but i i really like color blocking and i like to explore with like color so instead of going like a bunch of different crazy colors i just went with all blues and a and a one undyed and um yeah i did that and i mean some of these details are incredible so it was really easy to seam up you can see well that seam doesn't match very well but, but typically um the seams match shoulder it's a set in sleeve construction it's knit in pieces because it's done in intarsia and yeah so we'll we'll get into that first let's talk about the yarn so we have um the dark blue for this was this rowan apeka soft dk these come in 50 gram skeins it's 70 percent virgin wool and 30 percent alpaca this is i don't know what color this is does it say it's a dark blue. Mm, I don't know if it says the color one on here. Um, very much a yarn chicken one. This is a little bit of a pricier yarn. I got this at a local yarn store, so it, I could have bought more, but I didn't really have a whole lot. Maybe you can see better. Left. This took four skeins. I also made the smallest size of the pattern. Um, so four skeins of this. We also used let's say on the high end of the spectrum, we use this Mokonomi, it's a thin wool in the color silver birch. It's basically like an undyed with like watercolor blue over it. And it sort of looks like natural glass. You know how natural glass is kind of green. Um, it has that sort of sheen to it. I don't know if you can really tell here. It's beautiful on the hang. This wool is probably the most expensive ball of yarn that I've ever bought in my entire life. It is wonderful. I want a whole sweater out of this. It is incredible and the price is really just worth it. So it's made from like thin sheep, which are, I would say, I think they're classified as archaic sheep. So they're really like an old breed. I would say most of the breeds that we have currently have been bred in England or, you know, after from the 1800s when their wool industry really took off. But these are like old school sheep the the fiber is just is, is just beautiful and that was held together with this drops kid silk mohair um i it really made it's a really weird color combination but it made such a beautiful combo on the sweater so that is the this combo made you can see right here these little details um, of the strands, that's one one strand of the mohair and one strand of the fingering weight mokonomi. It's a DK weight sweater, so um, that's what I did with that. Um, you know, I need to get this mohair out of my stash. This is color... I don't know what these colors are, but you know what will happen is everything is going to be in the show notes. I have all the yarn, I have um, links to the, the pattern, so if you have questions or if you need to know anything about that, go and do that. Um, did I also say that this was part of Pom Pom's issue 41? This was one of the sweaters or one of the designs in it. So 
that's where this came from. It's published and the designer is Sylvia Watts Cherry. She does beautiful and targeted stuff. She's really a lovely lady as well. Um, next we have, I got this. It's an undyed BFL Sport and I got it from a festival here in the Netherlands called Breidache, which means like knitting days. And uh, there was this cart, literally a cart in a corner with undyed animal fibers that were, you know, they had like camel and yak, but they also just had like merino or BFL or some other things. So that's what I got for that. And I just used an undyed. And that's of course the, the white background here. The last two yarns I used were Drops of Daisy. This is their non-superwash DK yarn. This is color 10 and this is color 24. It's like a cobalt from the slick sky. Um, so I used that and I used like only one ball of this and then this was one and a little bit more and then for the mohair I used one ball of that and then not even one of the Mokonomi. Um, and then one and a half of the undyed BFL. So that is my yarn thing. I, I went very high low with this and I'm glad I did. Uh, there are a lot of ends. So for some reason I keep my scrap yarn or yarn that I cut off in coffee jars. I don't know why. Um, all this blue right here are cuts from the inside of this. Um, and it's not even all of it because I have another jar and then I did some sewing actually at the library during knit night and so some of that just went into the trash. But I wanted to say that there's a lot of loose ends because of the nature for it. So this is size one. The modifications I made, I made the body longer than called for and then I also think I made the torso or the yoke depth a little longer, but not by much. Um, and then the sleeves, I think, were actually the size that my mom needed. Uh, and this this is knitting with a capital K. This is like a piece of knitting. And it's DK weight, and I have some DK weight sweaters, and this feels heavy. And let me show you why it feels heavy. So for those that don't know, Intarsia is like different strands of yarn. And you don't work at like color work where you carry all of them across. It's like one strand of yarn twisted over the other one. So you make like a little lock and then you pick up the other color and then you twist it over the other one, do that and make it over the other color and you knit it forwards and back. So it's knit flat. Knitting in Tarja in the round is like doable, but really just no. Um, in this sweater, there are up to 52 color changes in one row on some of the rows on the smallest size. So it is a lot and it takes a tremendous amount of time. Um, good thing it's pretty because otherwise I would not put this much effort into it. It was really pretty and I really liked it. So I, I was willing to do it. And also it was like a challenge. I think a lot of people are doing like magnum opuses or epic knit alongs or like dream knits and i would suggest that this would be one for the non-faint of heart but going back to it so this is the inside of things and as you can see and especially if you uh, followed my instagram there are a bajillion ends and then you just weave them in through the joining part like the part where you overlap you tend to weave them in over the joining part of the the two colors and then that secures them. I mean, I didn't do that for every single one, but there were a lot, a lot of ends to weave in because there were a lot of color changes. I probably could have done it a little bit different looking back at it, but this is what we did. There are some longer floats, um, especially in the white. I don't know if you can see it on that one. You can definitely see it on this side. Yeah, you can see these. Um, I you know what, it worked for me. Should you probably be doing that? That will catch on rings and stuff, I don't know. But that's why it's so heavy because you have, you know, your knit stuff, which is sometimes it's only two stitches and then you change, two stitches change. So there are a lot of ends to weave in. There's a lot of that, that twisting into it. So this is a heavier sweater than I would say a normal DK sweater. So you knit the front, the back, the sleeves separate, the sleeves are also knit flat, and then you seam up. Now the way that I like to seam 
is to start with, let me show you on the thing turned inside out or right side out. Um, I personally, with these type of things, especially a set in sleeve, I like to, because it has that actual like bell curve shape almost, um, I like to make sure that the shoulder comes out right and oh, look at this. It's beautiful how it like fits in perfectly. Like it's really, really nice. So I like to seam up the shoulders first and then I go from the top of the shoulder here and then I seam down one side of the arm and I seam down the other side of the arm and then I do the underarm over here and then I also go down to the hem. So I find that that makes the sleeve sit the best within the sweater when you're setting things in and you're sewing them up. Um, I used the, the light blue with it um, because it is cheap yarn. I don't know else, what else I'm gonna use it for. And it also like had a little bit more grip than some of the other ones. So I, I seamed it with that. You really can't tell. It doesn't really even matter. Um, but this took me three and a half months. I started October 8th. I finished January 17th, something like that. This is like a knit for knits. Like this is one that's a portfolio piece. It's just beautiful. Like I wish this was my size now because I would wear this. I would totally wear this. It's it's just wonderful. It just feels like you know, like this is a sweater. Like this is it. It was just really exciting. I mean, and I think that if you're spending as much time and effort on a project that like that's how you want to feel. I did do two forms of tubular cast on for this and we can go over that. Where is the bottom of this? So for the back hem, which is this one, I did a one by Very Pink Knits where basically you like cast on and then you knit like a piece flat so you provisionally cast on it a piece flat and then you like fold it up after a couple of rows and then that doubles your stitches essentially and puts it on now i find that one to be a bit tight like i went up a full millimeter needle size and it's a bit tight and it's not like my favorite two by two cast on and i think it looks okay but what i did is i've since knit the owen sweater and megan put a really cool two by two tubular cast on um, on there. And it just, it, I, it has more stretch. I think it looks a little bit better. I don't really know if you can see this or not. But this is a better tubular cast on for me. I usually do a tubular cast on and cast off. I think it feels wonderful on like the neck and uh, the wrists um, and the way that it's finished is just beautiful. And I'm willing to spend, especially with a project like this, I'm willing to spend the time on making the finishing details look really beautiful instead of just like, uh, you know, like the knit one, slip one over, knit one, slip one over. I just, on a garment, I don't know about that, but like, especially on this, like it needs to have good finishing and really look polished and beautiful if I'm gonna spend this much time. And I think it does. And I just, I'm in love with this. This was a wonderful knit. It's not hard. I would say it looks like a lot and I think it it is a lot, but it's not hard. It is time consuming because it takes a little bit longer to knit the rows and figuring out what to do with ends and the different ways of holding the yarn or not holding the yarn, I think is a little bit of trial and error and you need to experiment with that. You can either do like a bobbin or there's like a butterfly thing that you can do, or you could do like me and just rip off like um, three arm lengths or whatever and then and have it be a big old tangle. Um, you just have to get used to some mess, a little bit of organizing. And then I think what I did is every time I hit one of these rows with the, the Mokinomi, I would pause and sew in all the ends because I, if I were to do just like the sleeve alone, I think I did half of the sleeve I wove the ends at like a knit night. Um, and I, I think it took me maybe three or four hours to weave in the ends just on the, the one half of the sleeve. So if you keep up with it, 
then it's better. Anyway, I, I don't know what else to say about this. Like, if you're adventurous, if you don't mind a bit of a mess, <laughs> then, and you have the time and you want a really beautiful, and like, this is a sturdy piece because of all the seams, it's really solid. So, I mean, this will get you a long lasting, like heirloom piece of a sweater. And on those type of sweaters, I don't mind spending a little bit more money on the yarn. It's just, it's just, it's amazing. I really hope that my mom does not find alpaca itchy. She says she does not. Um, she's tried some alpaca stuff on that I have, but I don't know. I mean, it's just, look at this. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I'm obsessed with Intarja. I, I just, just go forth, go forth and do. Go forth and do. That's all I have to say. We have one more project, my next Intarja piece, and that is it. All right, we are back. I need to take a call and we are ready to go. I have hydrated, I've gone to the bathroom. We are good to talk about the last thing. So the last thing I want to share lives in this bag. And it is the Woven Warm Shawl by, oops, by Nancy Marchand. And it is also in Tarsha. And I don't know who's going to wear this. I don't know anything. It's one of those ones where I just wanted to make it. And that's what we're, we're doing with our lives. So let's start with the yarn. This is all whole super soft. There are a couple reasons for this. Is One, it's pretty affordable. I don't know who's going to wear this or whatever and I don't want to spend a lot of money on it, and I did not, because I have a lot of whole super soft in my stash, and I, um, also it's relatively affordable, and I have a gift card, so like this whole thing cost me the shipping of um, some yarn, which was, I think was like eight euros. I mean, it took like two and a half weeks, but, but there we are. So all whole super soft, and I think this is a great, shawl yarn i mean it's really quite light but for what i want to do with a shawl which is not even really wear it it's just basically knit it um this is it and what i wanted to do was like yellow so in previously my my paragon was like a blue base let's do that with yellow and i picked out i think i ordered the rest of their yellows in neutrals from holst and then i took the other things from my stash including some browns and I like laid it out and I tried different color combinations and stuff like that and uh, there were uh, like a bunch of contenders I think they're like four or five colors that I did not use but overall I think this should be like a stash um, use up more than I've, I've purchased thing for once so uh, let's go to the colors that we've decided so we've decided yellows and light neutrals is is what I'm going for and these aren't like super vibrant colors but they, but they work the background color is this a crew it's a cone I've had this is giving me like two sweaters three sweaters I really just like it will not go away it's still here which I'm not mad about because I think this was like 25 euros something like that um it's very affordable I love knitting off of cones so I have this a crew I have a another one that I want to show you that we need to discuss. So this is their bleached white one, which I was expecting to be lighter, different. I don't really, maybe on camera it's showing off is, is a different color. Is it? We'll see when they hold this all up. But like, I can't in real life tell a difference whatsoever between these two shades. I don't know. So uh, bleached white, a crew. There's a bunch, so I'm going to put them down on the ground. We have, uh, as another neutral, we have Oat, which I had from a previous shawl, the Aurora Cabin shawl. I put this in there. It wasn't the best to go along with it, but that's fine. I have Nougat, which is like a like marzipan -y. It has some grayish, like beige-ness to it. And those are the neutral colors that I'm using. And then I have some yellows. We have 
pineapple that I got, which is a really nice light um, yellow. We have maize, which is something that I used in my Marie Wallen maple scarf that I have some of this, I have a lot of this actually left over. So that's where that came from. Uh, we have Sunrise, which I don't know if I really use or not. Um, this actually seems a lot more orange than I expected when I knitted it up. It looks fairly yellow. And then the last color I have is this, what is this? <laughs> old gold, um, old gold, and then this is the Sunrise. So that's what we're, working with here. Uh, I'm not going to hold this all up because I only have two hands, but it's four neutrals and four yellows. And the way that I'm doing this, let me show you my schematic because I tend to like plan things out a little bit. So I should have already shown a picture of the shawl, but I have the list of my colors here. I have my background color right here. And then what I did is I put some lines for the order of the the vertical stripes and then horizontal stripes. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And how I want them placed. And so the colors are going neutral, yellow, neutral, yellow, neutral, yellow, and then the background is neutral. Um, I decided to go for three, like the, with the way that the colors worked out, it was about three stripes of each. So from the bottom, it's three, 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 um, until I use all of the colors with the white in the background. Each of those colors will be used once. And then for the other way of the shawl, the center is um, just three, and then it's three, 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 and it will flank. So it will it will start with the, you'll see, but like the, the three of the middle colors and then color two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that sort of thing. That is the plan of this. So how is this looking and, and how's it going? I tried a bunch of different things. And at first I tried this. So this was my first cast on with it. And what happened was I used this gold crest, which was this color, which is like a darkish mustardy brown brown yellow like it actually looks kind of brown in this and I thought that it was too dark so I think that the colors that I would use would really pop but I wanted it to be lower contrast I guess so I switched to the a crew which is just the white which would give it a lot lighter of a feel and I uh, I'm very happy with that choice because this just wasn't working for me and this is the beginning of the shawl anyway so it's like rip it off, do whatever. What I wanted to do was I'm using 3.25 millimeter needles and I wanted to see how this would block out. And I think it really blocked out quite nicely. The thing about Holst is I really like working with it. I think it's great stash yarn. It's wonderful for this. I'm not the biggest fan of it knit up. And that's because it has so much spinning oil in it that it really like clumps. So there's, this is what <laughs> it's looking like at the moment for the shawl. This is what I've done. So you can see what I've, I've meant by the stripes. Um, all these, this mess, this tingled mess is my my intarsia-ness. Um, so it's, it's three stripes, three stripes, three stripes, and then the, the bottom is three, three, and we're going up. So this is what I have, but I mean, look, this is not like the most beautiful knitting, but you can see that it, Hold on, it blocks out a lot better. This is the same part right down here. Can you see this? Either way, this is where I am. I'm really enjoying this. I would say this is a lot more, like you have to be more on top of your management of the colors for this. I tried the bobbins, I tried the butterfly method, um, so with the Paragon, I just did like three arms lengths and was pulling it through. And um, that's what I'm doing with this too. That ended up, it's what works for me the best. It's because I can just pull the thing if it ever gets tangled and and do that. But I would say this is easier in Tarsha because you only have to keep the strands vertically on 
and she recommends carrying the background color with everything but basically it's like striped and you can break the yarn after every every stripe so um that's kind of how it's going and you can see right here like this is the a crew and then this is the bleach white is it showing as any difference whatsoever i'll watch this back and i'll make a decision but i really don't think so i mean like i'm not mad at it but i just thought that it would be different i'm still going to continue with my plan and, and do it anyway so this is my latest Intarsia. I can only do one Intarsia at a time, I've determined, but I'm in love with it. I'm also in love with how she handled like this weaving pattern. I think it's really cool and I really wanted to do something with that. She had a like rough sweater pattern-ish that she was using this on and I think I'm, I might do something similar now that I know how this works which was actually really simple. Like, as I said, this is easier in Tarja than the Paragon just because of the length and the number of floats and it's like faster knitting. But uh, not, I might incorporate something like that into a sweater design or something. I don't know. I need to figure out other in Tarjas, which I think will be a whole different topic for a different podcast. And I'm just really enjoying this. I have this on my Chow Goose and then I have it on that really big needle. It's you know, what, we're in one, two, three, three colors right now, and we have eight. So this is, she gonna be big, she gonna be a big girl, but I'm not mad at it. It will keep me busy for a while. And it's just, it's really enjoyable, and it like uses up the yarn. And I mean, this is all mostly stash yarn anyway, and I just think it's gonna be a really fun knit, and I'm really curious about like how it's going to look when it's knit up. Like right now, I think, it's more yellow than I anticipated it being, but I think that's just because I did this really like bold yellow, but we'll see how things look when it's knit up and the placements and stuff that I've chosen. Um, I really did the three stripes of the neutral and three stripes of the yellow to like make it a contrast. She gives a couple of different, <clears throat> excuse me. She gives a couple of different like ways to do it on the pattern and she has a couple shawls knit up with like different amounts of, of contrast or number of stripes or whatever but for the amount of yarn that I have the different colors this is what I've decided I was maybe going to go random at first and I think that that would be okay I don't know, I decided against it. I decided that might be a little too fever dreamy and like not organized enough, especially when this is very like regimented lines. I know she has, I think I've showed you the image already of the one with West wool with like all of the colors. So I know that you can do it random and it will look a certain way, but I, I don't know. I decided to get a little bit more organized and honestly planning for this was really like almost as fun as knitting it because you just like I laid them all out and then when you put them together you're like okay what is this going to turn into how do I want this to to act it's like I just don't I don't know um we'll see and then the way that I'm keeping them together I found is I just take like a t-pin and like stick it in with the ball band it seems to be working I need to clearly put it on some of the ones that I've used but yeah, so that's my latest Intarja that I am working on and I'm very excited. I just, I'm loving Intarja and what you can do with it and all these different things. I'm like a big color blocker. If you've ever been to my home, which you most of you have not, um, like it's color blocked and that's like, I really enjoy doing that. So this is, this is something that I'm going to pursue and we're going to see what happens this year. Maybe some fun stuff, maybe some designs, maybe other people's projects. I have a couple of ideas coming up and we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for now, which I'm sure was more information that you really needed to know about a, a stripey shawl, but there we go. Um, thank you. For all of those who enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment on the videos. Let's chat. Let's have a conversation about some of this stuff. I really feel like I'm talking at you quite a bit, which technically is the format, but like, let's interact. I think it's a lot of fun. And yeah, so I will see you all 
later be kind to yourselves i mean that and like be kind to others and stay warm it is freezing here which is why the sun is out but it is freezing so i hope that everybody's comfortable and healthy and happy and that you've had a great start to the new year i will see you in two more weeks with a i believe we're going to do all fingering weight whips episode so unless things change that's the plan and i will talk to you later goodbye <laughs>